Kyle and Tucker clash, and Summer accepts an invitation from Chance. Tucker arrives at the Abbott residence, where Jack inquires as to his purpose for being there. Tucker has arrived at Ashley's house and asks Diane if she has informed Jack that he is no longer interested in Jabbot. She did not since she does not trust him. Tucker enters and tells everyone that he's decided to focus his efforts on the new firm. A fresh start. Jack inquires as to what this has to do with Jabbot. Tucker responds, that's the million dollar question, and inquires about Billy and Kyle's whereabouts. Ashley wonders why he cares. Does he require a larger audience? They argue over being enemies, and Tucker insists on declaring peace with the Abbots. Jack assures him that they are not interested. Tucker reiterates that he is no longer interested in Jabot. He wishes for peace and extends his hand to shake Jack's. Jack tells him to put his hand down. He's tired of the conflict and of not knowing what his next move will be. Tucker is tired of it as well, and he believes the new venture will offer him a sense of purpose. Jack says, You're not afraid of a little friendly competition, are you? No, according to Jack. Ashley informs him he's got a deal if he comes up with the money. Tucker walks away, and Jack remarks, That was almost too easy. Do you think he's on to something? Ashley responds, Of course he does. Tucker, Jack, Ashley, or Tucker. Desiring peace and playing the victim irritates Jack. He can't understand why he wants to recreate his empire with glissade since he understands nothing about the beauty industry. According to Ashley, business is business. She wouldn't rule him out just yet. Before Tucker can take control of glissade, Jack decides they must destabilize it. They must expose the truth about McCall. Diane cautions them to be mindful of the timing. Ashley will absorb the hit if they do it before he takes charge. Or Diane also expresses her dissatisfaction with Billy's absence Kyle from this strange his father proposed the theory when it comes to that there Jay isn't Bird, one, and Tucker's enjoyment is only making the Abbots worried. Audra speculates that he may wish to be underestimated. Kyle ponders the question, what if he's playing all of us, you included? Audra will continue to trust him, unless there is a reason not to. She informs Kyle that he must provide valuable information. If McCall continues to ignore them, they'll realize they're likely to be abandoned. Tucker texts Audra in the club bar, we should meet. Kyle assures Audra in her suite that he'll be all right if Tucker doesn't have a plan. He has a safety net, but she staked everything on this. Where does it leave her if he's just doing this for his own amusement? Audra has her own safety net in the form of Newman Media. Kyle claims that he is not dragging his feet. Audra agrees that they both need to know more about McCall's plans. She tries to figure it out, but he teases her that it's wrapping paper and tags and refuses to let her look. What shall we eat? He asks, and she chuckles. She hopes the present isn't too pricey for Connor. She persists in her quest to discover what it is. Billy finally gives in and pulls out a snorkel, a beret, and a bikini. What is going on? Chelsea is perplexed. Oh, Billy is taking her to St. Tropez to ring in the here. new year. He, he wanted to explain that she followed him out of society. Him. Summer Chelsea. strongly denies it. She came to get some caffeine. The topic shifts to Chance and the GCPD. He claims that some of the guys are going to take him out for a beer, while others believe he is betraying them by leaving. How can they be so selfish? Screams Summer. Ho! Oh, Chance exclaims. Take it easy, Tiger. Please take a seat. Summer admits to having a temper. It runs in her family. Chance admires her. She hopes he has more ideas for his next chapter than just drinking beer with the guys. Chance boasts about taking Sharon to see one of his favourite bands tonight. Summer stutters, nice. Chance continues, I think Sharon doesn't want to go. She's just teasing him, but he expects her to be their biggest fan after the show since they're so talented. Summer inquires about the band's Chance name, no and he idea. responds, say jump, Summer Summer's mouth drops open from their previous Is Sharon tour? insane. Anyone with good taste yeah, enjoys them, no offence to Summer Sharon. Insane. Just then, Chance receives a phone call from Sharon. I totally get it, he says before disconnecting. Chance replies to Summer, today must be your lucky day. I have one extra tip to their favourite band, he says, and it's all yours. Summer Chance sees Summer isn't convinced, but Sharon may still want to attend. Chance claims she is engrossed in a work conference. 
Can you tell me what happened? I thought you were head over heels in love with these guys. Summer complains about her job. Chance instructs her to contact him later. He's not going to allow her pass up this opportunity until she has a good reason. As Daniel steps in, he walks out. Tell your sister to come to the concert with me tonight, oh, Chance offers. A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. A for Tucker. Are you blushing? Jack informs Daniel Diane that he wants to put her concerns about Billy on hold for the time being. Diane, unfazed, complains that he is nowhere to be found. Jack recognizes her desire for Kyle's employment and points her that their kid has accepted his new role even if she hasn't. He's not going to fight with her. Kyle and Billy up. Daytime, Emmy nominee joins N The Billy recounts how Chelsea compared his ambition to pull Tucker down to gambling on society. He sees how much effort she has put into herself and wishes to follow in her footsteps. He took what she said to heart and recognized how he felt about the war for Jabot. It's not good. It's always there. That feeling, that chase. He doesn't need to go there because it leads to a risky location. The key thing, according to Chelsea, is that he acknowledged it. Thank you, Billy says. He must battle the instinct by denying the opportunity to engage. And he asks Chelsea her to pledge that if Tucker continues to delay, she will admit that he has no plan or that he does not intend to include them if he is successful. She's concerned that he's playing her by attempting to turn her against Tucker. Kyle actually cares about her. She is moved. They kiss, and Kyle says he needs to get back to work if he's going to accomplish his job. A knock comes at the door as she steps into the restroom. Tucker smirks at Kyle's unbuttoned shirt and adds, Gee, Kyle, what exactly are you doing here? Yeetia Kyle Audra Tucker informs Kyle that if he continues in this manner, they will no longer be working together. He's supposed to be in Jabot right now, avoiding suspicion. I'm not your lackey, Kyle smirks. I'm the key to it all. Tucker sneers. I'm turning out to be completely useless with my stall tactics. It makes me wonder whose side you're really on, Kyle. Kyle informs Tucker that if he wants him to prove his commitment, he must reveal the game plan. And Tucker, I who informs her that her boyfriend has inquired about the game strategy. She expresses an interest in knowing the plan. Tucker wishes for Kyle to obtain sensitive information. Sensitive for whom and about what? Kyle asks. Shut up and listen, yells Tucker. He instructs Kyle to locate a new and creative product that J-Bot is about to introduce, something that has been in the works for years and cost millions of dollars to produce. Kyle quips that exposing the information to the press isn't going to bring Jabot to its knees. Tucker asks Audra if she can make him stop talking. You will then get me the formula to said product and how to make it. Gisade will launch the product first. Jack will look for the company's mole and the breadcrumbs will lead to the culprit. This will succeed in undermining Jack's faith in his closest allies while also destroying the new product. He hasn't determined whether the guilty party will be Diane seen her like this since she was a teenager with Kyle. Summer has stated that her relationship with Kyle is over. Daniel was referring to the gentleman who had just arrived. Summer wishes for him to back down. Daniel was just thinking that if she didn't pursue this attraction, she may drive herself insane. Join him at the show. I'm sure you want to. Summer is eager to go. If she does, they'll have a fantastic time and she won't want to go. With Sharon, things will definitely become complicated. Daniel isn't telling her to join him in bed. They talk about unrequited love which gives you butterflies and makes you feel nauseous. Daniel believes that confronting it head-on is the best way to deal with it. Summer wonders if they're referring to him right now. Heather and Lucy have returned to Genoa City. While Lily is going to let Jack, Diane and Ashley finish the fight with Tucker, Chelsea wonders if he'll be able to do so since he's the one who dragged his mother into the fray. She believes he will be caught into the excitement of the fight. Billy isn't sure he can abandon Jack like that. Chelsea has no idea what the answer is. She believes he requires this as his purpose. Billy has one more option. Accept Jill's offer. Chelsea believes it is the same conflict, but on a different front. Billy informs her that it is different because Jack is at Jabot. 
he is constantly under the impression that he must impress him or risk disappointing him. Don't you feel the same need to impress your mum? Chelsea inquires. Billy claims she has complete trust in him. She is all alone. She's alone on that side of the table. She needs me there, and that means something to me. I hear St. Tropez is better in the summer anyway. Chelsea taunts him to the show. It appears that you have a star introduces Barbie to Genoa City. And she isn't alone, Kyle tells Audra in her suite, that he took a calculated decision to come on strong and go after Tucker. Seemed like it worked, she muses. Kyle is unsure. He isn't convinced that his strategy is to frame Billy or Diane. He would never trust me to set up my own mother. He believes he will be the sacrificial lamb, and he intends to double-cross Audra in the same way. It is up to him to use Tucker's scheme against him. Do you agree with me, or are you going to continue with Tucker? Kyle, Audra's Yotaka, answers his phone to Ashley in the club dining room and asks, You have a price? She simply sent it to him. You're not kidding around, are you? He says after reading it, Ashley disconnects because she wants to finish it as quickly as possible.